for. Alison's um, got the papers. Would you know, it is three days to go now until France's presidential elections, and Alison has been scouring the papers for us. Um, what are they saying today, Alison? Well, Stuart, they're having a hard time believing that it is just three, <laughs> to, three days to go uh, until the first round of the election. Uh, according to France's Catholic paper, La Croix, uh, France seems to be plunged in a deep state of lethargy over the election, but the paper warns that, quote, like still water, we must beware of what is happening underneath the surface of a country that is bored of itself, especially because with so many voters uninterested and undecided, well, the uncertainty is huge. Uh, that is their main headline today there, the great uncertainty. Now, uncertainty does seem particularly high among left-wing voters, and that's the idea uh, behind this cartoon by Coco for Liberation. Uh, this man is asking, do you know who you're voting for yet? And the response there is Doliprin, which is a common pain reliever you often use to stop headaches. Could do with a few of those in the next two days. Uh, a <laughs> lot of uncertainty, as you say, Alison, there on the left. Could this be, perhaps, um, due to the fact that the two front runners, of course, are from the centre-right and the right? Yeah, that is, of course, Emmanuel Macron, the president, and far-right Marine Le Pen. Now, in recent days, Macron's camp has really been sounding the alarm over Marine Le Pen's potentially winning the election. Uh, Le Figaro, as you can see, sees this as a scare tactic for mobilising voters. But the strategy has Macron's supporters rather divided. Uh, the paper quotes an MP from his party who said, the moral argument culpabilizes voters and hasn't actually worked for a while. According to Liberation, though, uh, Macron's camp is genuinely nervous and the paper is too. Uh, we can check out their front page, their headline today, the far right is more of a threat than ever before. Liberation writes that Le Pen has more momentum now than she did back in 2017. Not only has she succeeded in normalizing her party and breaking Breaking down the barrier between them and the traditional right, there's also a strong rejection of Emmanuel Macron from left-wing voters. Uh, Politico, the website, is also looking at how Marine Le Pen has closed this gap with Emmanuel Macron. Uh, two interesting takeaways here. First, she has been on the campaign trail, uh, visiting small towns, getting coverage in the local press. Macron, meanwhile, has taken a real hands-off approach. Uh, he's been focusing on the war in Ukraine. Uh, second, Le Pen has focused really heavily on the economy and cost of living, which are a main concern of French voters. Uh, and while back in 2017, Macron sort of embarrassed her during the debate on economic issues, well, Politico notes that since then she's really sharpened her economic proposals uh, to a point where business lobbies have actually been quite impressed. Let's turn away from the uh, French elections. We're going to uh, head to Burkina Faso for this next story. Papers there are reacting after the country's former leader, Blaise Campore, was found guilty of murdering his predecessor, Thomas Sankara. Now, this verdict was such a long time coming that there's actually a bit of amazement uh, in the local press today. Uh, Wakat Serra asks, who would have believed it? Even the most optimistic had lost hope that justice would be done for, quote, the bloody coup of October 1987. Uh, the paper writes that after 35 long years, this trial is historic not only for Burkina Faso's justice system and for the country, uh, but also, they say, for a generation of African youth for whom Sankara, the father of the revolution, was really an icon iconic figure. Uh, this verdict does come with mixed feelings, though. Uh, the paper Le Pays describes it as a mix between relief, disappointment, and a taste of incompletion. Uh, that's notably because the paper says uh, that the trial didn't address suspicions of foreign involvement in Sankara's murder. Uh, Aujourd'hui, Ofaso, another paper, writes that there's a lack of reconciliation here as well. Uh, the paper notes that Bla Blaise Campaore and the others found guilty were given the maximum sentence under Burkina Faso's laws, which is actually a heavier sentence uh, than the one being sought by the prosecution. Still, though, they note Campaore is unlikely to carry out that sentence. He has lived in exile in Ivory Coast since he was ousted by protests back in 2014. Let's have a word about some of those latest sanctions against Russia, notably those from the US. Um, these are the ones targeting Vladimir Putin's daughters you want to talk about. Yeah, and they have sparked a particular interest from the papers, uh, mostly because we know so little about his daughters and about his family. Uh, there is a rare Putin family photo on The Guardian's front page today. Uh, that's Vladimir Putin and his former wife, Ludmilla, along with their daughters, uh, Maria and Katerina, Probably this photo dates to the early 90s, given that they were both born in the mid-80s. Now, according to the Wall Street Journal, they have kept such a low profile that many Russians don't actually know what they look like. Well, this uh, is a more recent photo of the older daughter, Maria, who is now 36. Uh, she is a pediatric endocrinologist. Uh, his younger daughter, meanwhile, who is 35, has a master's degree in physics and mathematics. Let's come back to the French election. It's hard to stay away, isn't it? Um, a bit of fun, this one, though. The Huffington Post is looking at some of the candidates' promotional swag. 
That's right. Now, you may not think of French elections as being quite as capitalistic as we see in the U.S., but fundraising goodies are becoming uh, more and more popular here. The Huffington Post uh, points out that Macron's supporters seem to be already in a celebratory <laughs> mood uh, with the bottle opener that you see nice. here that is shaped like his head. Yeah, it feels like there are a lot of good jokes to be made here, but I'm going to try and refrain. Um, it is interesting seeing how the choices sort of reflect the identity and strategy of each party. Uh, far left, Jean-Luc Mélenchon and the Green Party candidate Yannick Jadot are both going for t-shirts and tote bags with pop culture references, so maybe trying to get the younger vote. Uh -huh. uh, Marine Le Pen, meanwhile, is selling pétanque balls with her party's logo. <laughs> pétanque, of course, a game uh, that's generally most popular with the older crowd. Marine Le Pen and balls. Oh, sorry. I shouldn't make that connection. <laughs> anyway. Alison, thank you very much. Alison with the papers for you here on France 24. Next half hour of today's programme, we're going to report from the Met